In today's video, we're going to talk about one of the most commonly asked questions inside of the R equalverse. Namely, what is the difference between the equal operator and the arrow operator? So let's dive in. It is really easy to think that both the arrow operator and the equal sign operator are kind of the same. After all, you can just assign variables using both of them. You can use the equal operator, as is typical in other programming languages, to assign a value to some variable name, and then you can use that variable name later. And the exact same thing works with the arrow operator as well. And this even works inside of functions. Take this function, for example. It's a pretty boring function. All it does is that it prints the value that it received into the console, and then it returns the number five. And when we want to call this function, once again, we can use the equal operator, which is the common thing to do, or we could also use the arrow operator, which is the uncommon thing to do, but it technically works. So once again, it's easy to think that both operators are really the same thing. But that's where different scoping comes in. You see, the arrow operator has a much broader scope than the equal sign operator. In that sense, it is more powerful. And the best way to explain it is to use the function that we've just defined. Let's first make sure that our variable sum number is never defined. And now if we use some number, we see that we always get an error that it isn't found. And now watch what happens when I call the function as I did before using the equal operator. Obviously, we get the same results as before, but also if we call the sum number, it still isn't defined. This happens because even though we do an assignment here, this equal operator only works locally, which means that the variable we assign is only available locally inside of the function. This is different when we use the arrow operator. If we use the arrow operator here, stick that in there, the output is once again the same, but this time, after the function terminated, the result of our assignment is still valid. This means that this arrow operator assigns the global environment. You can even see this in your environment tab because now we have some number in here. Interestingly, this doesn't work when the function doesn't actually use the sum number argument. For example, if we comment out this one line here and then rerun this code so that we have this function, then we can use this arrow operator here. And now let's just throw in a number like 50. We see that we now only get the five as an output, not the printed I received the number kind of thing. But now if you look at some number, it is still 10, which means that it wasn't overwritten when we assigned this here. This happens only when the variable is actually used. Before that, R just ignores whatever you stick in there. Either way, due to the possible side effects, when you call functions, you always want to make sure that you use the equal operator and not the arrow operator. So now that you know the difference between the both operators, let me show you one more cool trick to make the arrow operator even more powerful. You see, you can level up the power operator by just a tiny tweak. Once again, let me explain this with a particular example. Check out this function here. It has a variable called defined inside that is defined inside of this function that I call power function. And at the end, this function only returns five again. We execute this function, we can now use it. And now if we call this power function, we don't have arguments this time, so we can just call it as is we see that we get the number five. But now if we try to use this defined inside variable, we see that it isn't available to us. This happens because even though we have used the arrow operator here, it happened inside of the scope of the function. So that means that this variable is only available inside of the function. And once it terminates, it isn't there anymore. But we can change that. We can make the arrow operator even more powerful by modifying it a tiny bit. All we have to do is to throw an additional arrow and now if we execute this and then use this power function, we see that we still get the same result. But this time, if we use the defined inside variable, we see that everything is there. We can also check within our environment tab and there we see that defined inside is also now available globally. So this additional operator is even more powerful than the original arrow operator. And it's a really cool thing that you can define variables inside of the global environment, even when you're inside a local function. But be aware, this is a very powerful feature and you might only want to use it when you really know what you want to do. All right, with that, we've covered the differences between between the two operators and we've also learned a really cool power up of the original arrow operator. I hope this cleared up a lot of confusion between the operators. Let me know in the comments if it did. And also, if you want to see more content like that, you might want to check out this playlist here. And with all of that said, I say thank you for watching and I will see you next time.